How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. John here again. This time, taking a look at 20.4 cell EMF. All right, our objectives are to use standard reduction potentials of each half cell in a voltaic cell to calculate the electromotive force. Shorthand EMF, which is also known as a cell potential, basically how many volts would this produce? Okay, so we're going to talk about standard reduction potentials first. They're basically a measure how much elements want to undergo reduction. So standard, why do we say it's standard reduction potential? Because standard means that it's one molar concentrations of these things or one atmosphere of pressure uh, if you're using gases. Okay, so it's also telling us that it's at 298 Kelvin and they're all going to be compared to the reduction of hydrogen. We said hydrogen reductions potential to zero, zero volts. All right, so you can look these values up on a chart. They're going to be on a table somewhere. They're going to be given to you. You're not going to figure out the standard reduction potentials. These are things you look up. So potential for oxidation. Hey, wait a minute. If I want to know how likely is that to be oxidized, but they tell me how much, how likely it is to be reduced. Uh, basically, it's just the opposite sign of the reduction potential. Remember, oxidation is the opposite of reduction. So the potential for oxidation is just the opposite of reduction. It's negated. All right, so more about it. So you're going to look up a chart. It's going to have this E naught thing, and it's going to see a V. It might even see, even see red for reduction. Okay, so here are some examples. Silver's reduction potential is positive 0.799 volts. Uh, basically, means reducing AG plus to AG zero would have uh, produced 0 0.799 volts of potential. Oxidizing, doing the opposite, if we we're talking about going in the opposite direction, well, then we have to negate the reduction potential because it's the opposite. So it would require 0 0.799 volts of potential to get that to happen. We want to go from AG0 to AG+. Plus. Another example, calcium being reduced uh, from plus 2 to 0 has a reduction potential of negative, point, or negative 2.87 volts, which is quite a bit. So reducing calcium plus 2 to CA0 would require 2.87 volts of potential. That negative sign is telling me that as a negative potential, you need to invest that if you want that reduction to occur. It also means that oxidizing calcium to calcium plus 2 would produce 2.87 volts of potential, which is probably pretty logical when you think about it. Uh, calcium is, you know, a pretty reactive metal. It's, you know, one of those alkaline earth metals that it's going to be hard to find in pure form because it's so reactive. So having it become a pure metal, probably not likely, but the opposite reaction, probably pretty favored. Okay. So what is a volt anyway? <laughs> Right? What is life? What is a volt? Deep questions. Basically, it's just one joule per coulomb. A joule per coulomb. That's all a volt is. Uh, it's a potential difference to supply one joule of energy on one coulomb of charge. Easy. Wait, what's a coulomb? Coulomb is just a measure of charge. Okay? It's we got to measure charge somehow. Coulombs are unit for it. Basically, you got 96,500 coulombs and one mole of electrons, so that'll help us out later. So standard reduction potentials, they only look at half cell uh, one at a time. They're going, hey, what is the potential on this side? And then you can look up what is the potential on this side. But if we wanna talk about the whole thing, the big picture, we gotta start talking about the electromotive force. And it depends on looking at both of the reactions and determine the potential overall. You know, what is my voltage uh, when I hook these two up? So elective motor force is the driving force between two half cells that powers a voltaic cell, denoted E subscript cell. Sometimes it's also can be referred to as cell potential. Okay, sometimes called cell voltage. Basically, if you have a voltage or an E cell, uh, cell potential greater than zero, it's a spontaneous process. You can power something. There's going to be a reaction that's given off energy and you can use a do work. If E cell is less than zero, it's non-spontaneous and you'd have to have to provide power if you wanted that to happen. And if E cell equals zero, you are at equilibrium, my friends. Basically, it's what happens when batteries are dead. They got nothing. Okay. So, taking a look at this reaction, this is a classic chemis chemistry example of a redox reaction. So, let's take a look at the reduction half reaction. Well, I see Cu is going from plus two to zero. So, that's my reduction. So, it's going from Cu plus two, gaining two electrons, giving me Cu zero. And I can look up at that potential. It's positive 0.337 volts. Oxidation. What's going on there? Well, I got zinc becoming zinc plus two. So that is my oxidation half reaction. Now, remember, your chart is for reduction potentials, which means whatever is on that chart, I'm going to have to negate. 
So the reduction potential is negative 0.763, which means the oxidation potential is going to be positive 0.763. All right, so what is the voltage going to be overall for this specific redox reaction? Well, you're going to have to combine the two potentials to tell you overall what you got. So it's going to be 0.377 plus a positive 0.763 volts gives you 1.14 volts. Okay, and that is the electromotive force. You just set up a battery under standard conditions. I'm sorry, a voltaic cell under standard conditions, and that is the voltage that you would get. Question, why is hydrogen's reduction potential zero? How's that even a thing? All right, well, every voltaic cell is made of two half cells, and it's impossible to measure the potential of just a half of it directly. There's no way we can go, all right, if I have this reaction, what's potential is just this half? There's no way to do it. So we have to arbitrarily kind of pick something to be our zero. Uh, so we assign a value to one of the half cells, and we can determine the other. So we said, hey, hydrogen, we're going to make that zero. Uh, and we're going to compare everything to it. So now if I make it a voltaic cell with hydrogen as a half reaction, we can measure the voltage and easily determine the value for the other half reaction because we know hydrogen is zero. So that's why hydrogen is zero. So wait a minute. All right, I got silver being reduced. I got calcium being reduced here and balanced, uh, flipping them around and doing stuff. This is what I get. Uh, but there's a two now in front of my silver. Do I need to double the voltage for silver when determining the electromotive force? Because I, I got two of them going now. No, don't. Don't do it. You'll be wrong. Okay. Volts is joules per coulomb. It's a ratio between the two. Right? You can double it and you double joules and coulombs. It's still the same ratio. It's an intensive property. It doesn't matter how much you got or how many times you do it. It's still the same potential. It's like density. It's mass over volume. It doesn't matter... You know how much of the stuff you got it's still the same density all right so it doesn't depend on the coefficients so don't let that throw you off ignore the coefficients all right so we got silver being reduced uh positive 0.799 and we have yeah i don't know why i did that okay right yeah duh. so if i doubled it if i had two in front it's still the same voltage if i put three in front it's still the same voltage if I put 90 in front it's still the same potential okay doesn't matter what the coefficients are so ignore them you guys like equations? I bet you do. Well, here's one for you. So I've been explaining how to think through it, but here's an equation for people who just want to remember equations and not really understand things. The standard cell potential is going to equal the reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. Now the question is, well, why am I subtracting the voltage of the anode? Well, at the anode, you're doing oxidation. It's where oxidation occurs. And oxidation is the opposite of reduction. So if I'm looking up the reduction potential, well, if I want the oxidation one, I got to negate that one. So that's where that minus sign comes in. You have to change the sign. Okay, so let's work through an example. I got silver uh, reacting with calcium, giving me calcium ion and silver metal. So I look up the two potentials, and these are my reduction potentials. Right, so I'm going to have to change one of them. So the anode I can tell right here is going to be the calcium because calcium is oxidizing from zero to plus two. So it's the anode, and the silver is getting reduced. It's going from a plus one to a zero. So I know that that's the cathode. So I'm looking at my stuff going on here. I know the potential of the cell is going to equal the reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. So now I'm just plugging things in. What's going on with the cathode? It was the silver, so I'm looking at that, and I'm minusing. Notice it's a minus sign because what's happening at the end is oxidation. So, boom. I plug it in, and that's what I get. You get 3.669 volts. That is my cell potential. What if they didn't give you the reaction and they just gave you the elements involved? They're like, hey, this is what you got. You know, what's the potential of voltaic cell created using silver or calcium? You got to figure out, well, which one's going to be the anode, which one's going to be the cathode. I don't know what's going on. Well, one of the potentials is going to get negated and then combined with the other. So you want a positive potential overall because it's saying that you're making a voltaic cell, which means you have a positive voltage. So you go, all right, well, which one of these do I have to negate to give me a positive overall? General pattern for you guys to, you know, recognize. The one with the smallest reduction potential is going to be more easily oxidized. So looking at this, silver has a positive value for its reduction potential, which tells me that that's a pretty favored reaction. 
Whereas this negative 2.87 volts is telling me, hey, this thing doesn't like to be reduced. It actually likes going the other way, being oxidized. So you can also look at it and go, hey, I know negative 2.87 is smaller than 0.799. So I know that I'm going to have to flip the sign on the 2.87. That calcium is going to be the thing that gets oxidized. And then you plug in your math like this, and then you get that answer. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, so which one will be reduced and which will be oxidized? So I have four different uh, half reactions going on here. So if I had silver with calcium, which one's going to be reduced and which one's going to be oxidized? Well, let me take a look. I got silver here, reduction potential of positive 0.799, and calcium negative. So I know calcium is smaller, so that's going to be oxidized. Silver is going to be reduced. All right, what about calcium or copper? So I'm looking at calcium. It's got negative 0.287, and copper's got a positive 0.337. All right, well, negative 2 is smaller than 0.3, so uh, calcium is going to be the thing that gets oxidized, and copper is going to be reduced. Let's make it a little trickier. Calcium or zinc? All right, well, I got zinc, negative 0.763, and calcium, negative 2.87. Which one's smaller? Calcium's smaller, so it is going to be oxidized, and zinc is going to be reduced. And if you don't believe me or you want to check your answers all you got to do is actually do the math so you go, all right well zn is the potential of the cathode minus the potential at the anode which will be a negative 2.87 and then you get a positive number i didn't do the math this is a positive number all right and last but not least silver or zinc all right well i have silver which is positive and zinc, which is negative, so negative is smaller, so this is going to have to be what gets oxidized. So zinc gets oxidized, and silver gets reduced. Well, relating it to vocabulary, a little throwback to stuff we mentioned before, oxidizing agents. Remember that term? It's basically something that causes oxidation. It gets reduced. The greater the reduction potential, the stronger the oxidizing agent it is. Um, Reducing agents, the opposite. They cause reduction, they get oxidized. They cause things to reduce in charge because they give them electrons, which means they get oxidized. The smaller the reduction potential, the greater the reducing agent it is. All right? Cool. Did I say that right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, which is greater? Which one is going to be a better reducing agent? Well, I'm going to look at silver and calcium. So reducing agent causes reduction because it gets oxidized. So which one is going to be the most likely to get oxidized? Calcium, because it's got a smaller reduction potential. Calcium or copper? So all right, calcium or copper? Which one is most likely a better reducing agent? All right, well, which one's going to get oxidized more likely? Uh, it's going to be the one with smaller reduction potential. Boom, calcium again. All right, another example. Calcium or zinc? Um, well, let's see. Zinc's negative 0.763 and calcium's negative 2.87. So which one is going to be the reducing agent and more likely to get oxidized? It's going to be the one with the smaller reduction potential, calcium, once again. And what about Ag or Zn? Okay. Well, you got Ag, which has a positive reduction potential, and Zn, which has a negative one. Negative is smaller, so Zn is going to be the thing that gets oxidized. It's going to be the reduction agent. And oxidizing agent is the same thing but different. All right, causes oxidation. Which one's more likely to be reduced? Well, I'm looking for which one has a bigger reduction potential, Ag or Ca. Well, Ag is right here, and Ca is right there. Which one's bigger? Ag. And there's going to be a pattern, right? I'm just going to, boom. It's going to be the opposite. The same pairings, it's going to be the other one. All right, because you just think about it. All right, calcium or copper? I got calcium and I got copper. Which one is a better oxidizing agent? Which one's more likely to get reduced? The one with the greater reduction potential, which is going to be the copper. Cool. So to summarize, the cell potential is equal to the reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. Stoichiometry of the half reactions doesn't affect the electromotive force, so ignore it and positive volts can do work. The one with the smallest reduction potential is gonna be more easily oxidized and will be the anode. 
think that's it. No, nope, one more. The greater the reduction potential, the stronger an oxidizing agent it is. Now I'm done. For realsies. Okay, so kind of a lot of information. Hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Goodbye. Okay,